Hello and welcome to this presentation. Consume SOAP XML web service via new HTTP client. You will learn how to consume legacy web service via the new Power Builder HTTP APIs. Topics covered review the legacy support to SOAP XML web service using the Cybase.NET engine. The session recaps the steps for creating SOAP XML web service and consuming them with the proxy or data window objects. It highlights the limitation of this implementation and describes how to overcome the known shortcomings by leveraging the new Power Builder HTTP client objects and with a lot of examples that will be discussed. So, the agenda of this presentation. I will start with a recap of SOAP Web Service limitations, explanation of the new HTTP client object, discussion of the message of the SOAP messages, and Power Builder example, and final conclusions. About myself, I'm a Power Server enthusiast, Power Builder developers for over 20 years, Appion MVP presented many times at Power Builder user groups and Elevate conference main recent activities, a large number of migration projects from Power Builder and Power Server Web and Mobile, and also PhD studies in machine learning and big data analytics. So let me recap the theory behind the SOAP Web Service. First of all, SOAP Web Service is sometimes labeled as a legacy web service, but true thing is it is not. Thinking of SOAP as an old web service is a common misconception. SOAP XML web services are still largely used out there, and there are even use cases and services to which they fit better than the more popular REST services. An important, an important uh, concept related to SOAP web service is the WESL, which is an abbreviation for web services description languages. It is an XML syntax that describes the methods and the parameters data types of the service. And you can usually access the weasel of a SOAP web service by adding the question mark weasel to the end of the web service URL. Then SOAP comes, which stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. It is the transport XML envelope for sending and receiving messages from the web service. In terms of Power Builder support, Power Builder includes legacy approach to call and create SOAP XML web service. What does it mean? It means that you can create a web service in Power Builder just clicking on New, Target, and selecting the icon.NET web service. Here, you will just follow the wizard, which will ask you to create a new Power Builder MVO and uh, in your library, you will get a number of objects. First of all, the web service project that you will just right click and deploy to actually publish the web service. And then um, the initially empty Power Builder MVO, in this case, and web service, where you will just add uh, functions like in a regular Power Builder MVO, which will represent the methods with corresponding signatures in your web service. Very easy. On the other side of the wire, if you want to consume uh, the web service, you have at least a couple of approach. So in my many tutorials on consuming SOAP web service in Power Builder, I've always started from the easy way, the web service data window rather than the usual approach in development languages that consists of creating the web service proxy and then instantiate and use it in the code. But, you know, the data window object has been always the plus of Power Builder over any other development language, and it can also be used to solve the problem of consuming SOAP web service. Just need to specify some additional properties. So, if the web service operation that you want to call has input parameters, you just specify them as data window retrieval arguments. If, data, if the web service returns a result, 
or has arguments by reference, you can select them to be displayed in the data window itself. So it is a quick and very powerful approach with just uh, with this very simple code that you see here, you can retrieve data from a web service data source. You want to display the web service output, just call data window dot retrieve. For example, here the list of some employees. You want to change the information of the employees in the data window and then send the changes back to the web service, which will be then in charge of committing the update to the, web, to the database. You just call data window dot update. In fact, you can use data window update and insert row and delete row functions to perform CRUD operations via the web service instead of direct SQL. And how you build a web service data window in Power Builder? Maybe someone never pay attention to. Among the possible data window data sources, you can see also an icon which tells you web service instead of, for example, table or SQL. And if you go to the data window designer, rows and uh, the sub item here, you find a special panel for selecting for setting the update condition, this web service update. Basically, in here, you bind the data window methods to the web service operation. And the web service data window, by the way, also works out of the box in Appium Power Server when you migrate your application to web and mobile architecture. The second way in Power Builder to consume SOAP web service is the web service proxy object. You create a proxy from the web service weasel. So you just create new, click select new project web service proxy wizard. You follow these panels which ask you first of all for the weasel file name. You input the weasel, Power Builder will recognize the methods and uh, provided by the web service and will it will create the proxy itself and the related structures belonging to the web service. This is what you get in your PBL, the proxy project, uh, the proxy itself, uh, this green icon. In this case, also a structure for this sample web service, which retrieves information about the employees in the Power Builder demo database, and then also don't forget, you need to include the Power Builder extensions for SOAP Web Service Client. And uh, that makes SOAP connection objects to show up in your uh, PBL. SOAP connection, SOAP exception, and SOAP PB cookie. And now you have all ready to call the web service methods from your code. So proxy, project, proxy objects, and if any, web service structure. These are the three MVO that you get by selecting the Power Builder extension PB Web Service Client, uh, PBX. Here you see an example of Power Builder code using the SOAP connection object to instantiate the proxy and connect the remote web service endpoint. And then the web service operation, OFSUM in this case, which is called and it returns the value that is saved into a variable. The same functionality in Power Server needs a specific proxy object, which is called App and Web Service Component. The reason why you can't not use the Power Builder proxy is that it has dependency on external DLL and Power Builder extensions, which do not, do not really fit in a web deployment. However, limitation exists, and this is why today you are here to learn how to overcome this limitation using, instead, the new Power Builder built-in HTTP client object that was introduced in version 2017. So the, H the HTTP client object 
is a base object for sending HTTP requests and receiving HTTP responses from a web resource identified by a URI, a uniform resource identifier. Power Builder is a legacy object for accessing web resources, INET, but compared to it, HTTP client is easier to use and it supports all HTTP methods, get, post, put, delete, etc. Let me uh, clarify one thing here. HTTP and SOAP protocols are not comparable themselves, since SOAP sits on top of HTTP. Thereby, I'm not saying that HTTP client is a replacement for SOAP connection objects or web service data window. In fact, it is way more. But to put it into our context, Power Builder HTTP client object can be also used to consume SOAP web services, which is what I will show in the next slide. Let me talk about the advantages now. The first advantage is you can have the same web service client implementation for Power Builder and Power Server because HTTP client doesn't need the proxy objects and the related DLL in Power Builder. And of course, this is extremely useful as uh, the web service proxy has many limitations and it defects calling SOAP web services that, that support the latest transport layer security 1.2. In fact, in terms of security, HTTP client supports all SSL and TLS protocols, including 1.2. There is no data type limitations for parameters and for return values. For example, complex nested objects or binary data. With HTTP client, you can set all HTTP protocol headers when you send a request, not only the few supported by Power Builder Proxy. And uh, at the same way, you can access all HTTP response headers. HTTP client allows to access SOAP extensions like uh, Web Service Security, Web Service Trust, uh, and so on and so forth. It does not provide direct handling or content manipulation, but since you can prepare and we'll see how the SOAP envelope of your choice, you can incorporate security features in the header of the SOAP message. And in combination with the new Power Builder encoding, hashing, encrypting, and compression objects, you can easily apply these algorithms in the web service request. So let me start with the first example to call a SOAP web service that returns elementary data, the simplest ones. This is a SOAP web service that is actually created in Power Builder using the legacy web service target. It is the one presented in Appian webcasts and hands-on training many times. So it connects to the Power Builder demo database and retrieves some data from uh, the employees tables and it plays with it. So when you open the web service endpoint from the browser here on top, um, what happens? Uh, you, you can select, of course, one among the available methods and you can see the SOAP envelopes for both request here and the response. This is the web service methods of uh, OF num employees, which returns the number of rows in the employees tables of the SQL Anywhere Power Builder demo database. It's interesting you know, to notice that I'm sending an HTTP POST operation to request the number of employees. So contrary to typical REST services where you just set a GET request for retrieving a web resource, in SOAP XML, you always submit POST request because the HTTP body needs to be supplied with the SOAP envelope. So the first section here shows the entire request with post web verb at the beginning and the web service endpoints on this first line. 
content type which is uh, of course very important and uh, it is XML by definition in SOAP web services and the length then the SOAP envelope starts with the name of the web service of the web service method that is being called OF num employees and here at the bottom you see the HTTP response which contains the, the status code 200 200 means request successfully processed the type of return data which is again XML and then the SOAP envelope with the results the number of employees which contain a placeholders here for the input argument if any and uh, no it ret and, and the return the data and all these placeholder have to be replaced with the actual values so very simple to get the template for the SOAP request and SOAP response just open the browser go to the web service and points and then you're ready to go the browser is good for understanding the service by the way either for the request and the response structure but if you actually want to call the service and you're not ready to implement your clients you can use open source tools like SOAP UI and Postman here you see the Postman on top here you have the POST method that the web service endpoints and in the center the body of the request where I, I essentially copy paste the template from the web browser to call the OF new employees function and notice that I have selected the robot type here so the body of the POST request in row mode and here copy paste what you have in the browser Finally, at the bottom, the response, where you can see the number 75 that comes up, which is the number of employees returned by the web service. Same concept if the web service returns a structure, no matter how complex it can be. So, for example, here you see the function of get employee, which is meant to return all employees by means of a collection of columns. ID, family name, last name, uh, department, ID, and salary. The SOAP request includes an XML tag, AMP, and employees, that is the name of the structure array. And on the right here, sorry, you, you, you see the SOAP response, which will return the actual list of employees. So the structure array is filled with the actual value. Remember, these are still the placeholder that will be replaced when you call the service. So, if you want to test this second web service operation, go again to Postman, create a new POST request to the web service weasel, select body, and paste the request template as a raw body content. You see, it's enough to specify the name of the structure array. You can remove indeed the structure definition, just keep the array and the structure name, which is enough for the request to be processed and have back, uh, see this picture on the right, the entire list of rows with the employee ID, the name, the salary, and the old shebang. This is the XML that you receive back when using the new Power Builder HTTP client objects, and you are now ready to use it in your code. Last example here that I want to discuss is when you actually send data to the SOAP web service. For example, this is the OF type method, OF update method, where you must pass the employee ID and uh, the last name and family name. You can see the SOAP request with the three fields in the body and the response below with just the return value maybe one, 
if the, up, the update succeeds, or minus 1 if it fails. Let's now discuss how to use HTTP client and submit the web service request and handle the response. So first of all, set the web service endpoints in a string variable and store the entire soup envelope in the second string variable, which is what you have in Postman in the raw body of the HTTP request. Then, very important, use the setRequestHeader method to specify the content type. So we want to inform the web server that we are sending a request and the body is in XML format. Next, send request, which delivers the request to the server. And in there, you specify the post operation, the destination URL, and the request itself. Next line, always good practice to verify with get response status code if the HTTP status code is 200, which means OK, it is a success status response code that indicates that the request has succeeded. And at this point, we are ready to receive the entire body. The entire response body, which is what get response body does, and the return XML is stored into a string variable provided by as an argument. Send request is very intuitive and simple, but keep in mind that Appium does not recommend to use it to, la to submit large data. And to give you an idea what large data is, Appium indicates whatever data transfer is bigger than 20 megabytes or several thousands of data rows. To overcome this limitation in stem of large data transfer, you can use post data instead. The aim of this script is equivalent to the previous one, but it is specific to post operation, which we understood are all communications towards SOAP web service and large data transfer. So first two line, same web service endpoint and SOAP request taken from Postman or browser template as demonstrated in previous slides. Then we still specify the content type as an XML. Next, the request is converted into blob because communications will be treated as a binary stream in both directions. And to this regard, before actually starting the request, we set the size here of you know, the request itself into the content length HTTP header. Secure protocol is just an example how you set the secure protocol. 5 means TLS 1.2, which is, by the way, one of the state-of-the-art security standard that you cannot achieve with the legacy Power Builder SOAP connection object. Now here are some calculation. I assume it is going to be a large data transfer. So the three types of requests in the examples here send only a few arguments at most but just pretend we are sending large data. So, large data transfer, which we do in chunks of one kilobyte, one kilobyte each. And to these regards, you need to use post data start, post data, and post data end. Like in a file read loop. Last line as before, check the status code and save the response body. When everything is completed, we import the XML data into a data window, which is designed to display exactly the five columns returned by the web service. So overall, some work to prepare the request, but the handling of the response is as simple as one data window import string. Or you can always use the Power Builder PBDOM library to parse out and manipulate the XML result. So let's recap. The presentation has shown the steps for creating a SOAP XML web service in Power Builder and consuming this web service via proxy or data window objects. I discussed the limitations and explained why the new Power Builder HTTP client object can be used for consuming SOAP web service. 
You do this in three steps. First, prepare the XML for the SOAP request. You can use the web browser or tools like SOAP UI or Postman to these regards. Next, use the HTTP Client API for sending requests and receiving response. Third, import the XML results directly into data window or just parse it out using Power Builder DOM. The HTTP Client object provides all it is needed to call SOAP Web Service. It overcomes proxy and web service data window shortcomings in terms of data type limitations and security protocol. TLS 1.2 in particular, this lack can be an issue with SOAP connection. I see that a number of SOAP server providers are switching off 1.0, forcing consumers to implement 1.2, 1.2 request. So you need to use HTTP client in Power Builder. All these benefits are well worth the trade-off for legacy automatism that you give up. I mean that Web Service Data Window and Power Builder Proxy help you a lot, especially the proxies, because they generate automatically the data structures used by the web service. While with HTTP client, you must create or parse yourself the SOAP XML. Very good, thanks for uh, listening and uh, stay connected with the Appium uh, community and uh, you will see there are a lot of discussions, technical articles and videos and also free online training and more. Of course, Appium also, you can also follow Appium on uh, social networks and uh, also on YouTube where you have a lot of uh, videos and you don't need their account registration. Thank you.